People seem to really enjoy my Mandalorian recap last week, so let's do it again. Let's do it every week going forward. We're talking about The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 2 today. This is the way. I'm not going to beat around the crotch. The first episode of Season 3, Total Disaster, Complete Misfire. I don't even know where this show is going anymore. It feels like, to date myself, a little bit lost. Remember remember Lost, that plucky little show that was massively popular and everybody kind of lost interest by the time the last season rolled around? Well, what happened was around season four, they actually got off the island, which was the entire premise. Get off this weird, mysterious island. So once that happened, it's like, what, what are we doing anymore? Well, at the end of season two of Mandalorian, Grogu finds a home with Luke Skywalker. Mando completed his main mission. So here we are in season three, they're back together. Why? Because they're cute together, and that's really it. And now our new story is focused on Din Djarin becoming a Mandalorian once again, officially. Unofficially, he's still wearing the helmet, he's still got some nasty hygiene going on, and he really wants to get back into that cult. Why is the question that keeps springing to my mind. Why do you want to be back with them? I know to him it's an Olive Garden situation when you're here, your family, but this family is miserable. You have a bunch of boring, robotic characters who basically just say, this is the way. And they don't seem to give a shit about Din. I never hear a, hey, how's your day? Weather's nice outside. There's no conversation. No friendly camaraderie. What is he aiming for here? What's the goal? Bo-Katan has a castle now. She gets it. You don't need to wear that helmet to be a Mandalorian. And I think he's probably going to come to that conclusion eventually. We open with episode two and our plucky female mechanic. Once again, talking to her favorite customer, Din. She's going to play him like a sucker and pawn off one of her crappy droids so he can go spelunking with it. He looks at this tin thing and he's like, <laughs> this is not the robot. I, this is not the droid I'm looking for. You know, but he's going to take it anyways because uh, I don't know. Who cares? So he plops that thing in his vehicle that doesn't seem fit for a bounty hunter in the slightest. I still don't understand where he's storing sandwiches. Grogu's now on his lap. I like a little puppy dog, like a little baby. It's cute. They take off for Mandalorian Planet. It's been obliterated beyond all belief. But he's going to touch down. He's going to go take a dip in the waters below. Make sure that this thing is uh, certified for Mandalorians to go do their little whatever ceremony crap they do so they don't have to worry about alligator turtle things attacking them again that was a that was a plot point in the last episode they touch down robot gets out doesn't make it five feet before the thing goes missing just a complete waste of time complete waste of space din just can't with this droid he gets off the ship Pops on the little oxygen thing in his helmet so he's able to breathe what is presumably normal air instead of the shit that's out around him. It doesn't take him very long, though, to realize, hey, this air is actually breathable. It's not toxic at all. Well, isn't that great for Mandalorians who never take off their helmets? Who cares if the air is breathable is my big question. You guys don't take off the dumb things anyways. Just keep the oxygen tanks filled and you're good to go. This is the future, so... I guess you might just have endless oxygen running through that mask somehow. Like, this is the perfect planet to be on if you're a dude who can't take off his helmet. If the planet is poisoned, that's a best case scenario for the Mandalorians. Their enemies can't get them. They're protected. It actually makes sense why they would wear their helmets. He thrusts the boosters on the jetpack for a nice little fall through the caverns below. This, this place has been drilled into. It's been dug into. Lots of stuff happening. When he touches down in the depths below, um, it's clear to him that there's other creatures down there. There are Decepticons in these mines. Transformer-esque creatures rummaging around the place. The main antagonist is a sleek robot that's moving around quickly, pops out of a big daddy from Bioshock. The thing looks like General Grievous Jr. It's got the multiple arms, it's causing trouble. And Mandel gets kidnapped pretty early into this battle. But before he's kidnapped, or man-napped, I guess, Mando-napped, would be more apt. Lots of 
A lot of apps going on. He tells Grogu to go warn Bo-Katan of what's going on. Grogu does a flip to his hover pod, which unfortunately reminded me of the prequel movies where Yoda's flipping around like a marionette doll. He gets back to the plane, is attacked for four seconds by a dragon for no reason. This might be foreshadowing. This is what we in the industry call a foreshadowing moment. Grogu heads back to Mandalorian Castle where Bo-Katan is, you guessed it, once again sitting on her throne. What the hell is this woman doing all day? Every time we see her, she's just sitting on the throne, lost in oblivion. Does she not even have access to that shitty 3D hologram chess game that Luke played in episode four? I, I just, why? I get that she's butthurt, but even the most depressed person doesn't just sit and stare at a wall all day, and that seems to be what she does 24 seven. At least spark conversation with the robot butler. I mean, come on, lady. 24-7, sitting on the throne, all alone, pondering, lost in space, which fortunately for Grogu is a good thing because he knows exactly where to find her. She realizes something is amiss when he comes back Han Solo. She gets in the plane. They fly back to Mandalorian planet. She drops down below in the caverns in the dark, which I should point out is going to be super dark depending on your TV. If you don't have a TV from this year, you're going to have a hard time seeing what's going on. Do not watch this in the daytime. Do not watch this with any lights on in the house. Do not watch this with technology that's older than 24 months. Because you will see nothing of this episode. Nothing! I had to re-watch it on my computer because my TV, which is only seven months old, could not make heads or tails with what was going on. Now, granted, we watched it during the daytime. The blinds were down, but there was still some light around us there was still some light so that's on me i guess disney says you watch this at night with all the lights off otherwise your experience is gone anyway she tracks down mandalorian grapple hooks the dark saber and just goes to town <laughs> the choreography i did just now i can assure you is better than what was in this episode she also takes down one of the giant robot vehicle things slides under it. <laughs> Clearly, she has claim to the sword. After inflicting a bunch of pain and saving dumbass, she starts up a fire and even cooks dinner. She's the perfect woman. She's the perfect woman. Din's not done being stupid this episode, though. It's time for him to take a bath. So he walks over to the Mandalorian pool, starts slowly going in, and boom! He drops down like a character from a Home Alone movie. Didn't pay attention, I guess, to the ground below. Now this part was a little unclear. Did he fall by his own accord? Or was he pulled down by one of the creatures? Like the giant seven-story Godzilla monster that's just hanging out down there. I played back the tape a few times. It looks like he straight up just walks off the cliff. Like an idiot. Perhaps he thought it was a shallow pool. I think the only thing shallow here is him. Bo-Katan now has to save him again. Two saves in the span of four minutes. She flies all the way down to the bottom, scoops his ass off the ground, and then back up they go, makes eye contact with Godzilla, and then on the surface she sits there like, <laughs> we're in it now. Run it. If you could see this episode, it was better than the first of the season. I didn't think it was anything great though, still. Not, not loving this season so far. Not really understanding where they're going with the story. So I'm not really latched on anything. Also not a fan of Mandalorian being kind of useless. Kind of foolish. And I don't agree with his, his whole plight. I don't agree with his storyline even. Why do you want to join these people? They're morons. They don't have good traditions, dude. Figure out your life. It's just a little frustrating. Now, the highlight of this episode by far, far and away the coolest moment, is when Bo-Katan is walking down there and she sees a little nest above the cavern. She knows shit's about to go down. Without even looking, without batting an eye, she shoves Grogu backwards in his little pod thing. And then she gets ready to go to work on these three stooges, takes them out effortlessly while he sits back. I am a huge fan of the nonchalant no-look push. One of my favorite no-look pushes comes from Dumbledore. 
when he takes on Voldemort and Harry's over there. Get the fuck out of my way, Harry! Throws him against the wall while he's like making a giant water ball to take out Voldemort with. The scene's just great. Harry's like, eh! Pushes him back. He's like, get down! <laughs> Harry's in the back like, eh, stupefy, stupefy, this is the only thing I know, stupefy, expecto patronum! Anyway, Bo-Katan, sweet moment, just a, just a shove. It's like, you, you don't, you don't know what you're doing here, bro. This is mine. Overall impressions, I like Mandalorian, I'm not loving the season so far, a lot to go. Hopefully this story starts to go somewhere a little bit more interesting though. I want to hear from you in the comments below. Do you like the recap? You having a good time with this? Like the video. I'd appreciate it. I'd also love if you subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I'm gonna try to do this every week in between all my movie reviews I put out. So please subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, tell your mom. She would love it. She would absolutely love it. And hopefully, I see you next time. Dun 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 dun. Bum 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 bum.